Hey, what is up you guys? My name is Jess and welcome or welcome back to Planted Hippie. Welcome back to another planty video, you guys. Today I do have a really fun video planned for you all. I wanted to go ahead and share with you all all of the plants I would never repurchase or buy again. These are plants that could have just not done well with me or I just simply have too many of them. So we're gonna get into all of the big details on why each plant is not for me and why I would never repurchase them again. So if that does interest you, I please ask that you stick around, leave a like, maybe even a comment down below letting me know what plants you would never want to repurchase again, or even hitting that subscribe bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new video and to help me keep on planting. Please also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at planted.hippie where I post new planty photos and occasionally reels daily. So with that, let's go ahead and get into these plants I would never repurchase. All right, so we are going to start out with the very first plant on my list today, and that is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegated, or Variegata. And I have many reasons why I just could never repurchase this plant again. The number one reason being I kill them. I kill every single one that I buy or try to have in my collection. I believe, I guess just in my personal collection, they are mealybug magnets. They just get attacked every time I bring it in. It could be also because of where I'm getting them. They could already have mealybugs and I'm just bringing them home and growing them and then they just take over the plant and kill it. For whatever reason, I just cannot keep this plant alive. They are also very expensive sort of plants still. I mean, they are at least like 20 plus dollars uh, for like little strand plants. And then obviously the price goes up as they get bigger and longer and more mature. They can go over hundreds of dollars. So it is not a fun plant to kill. And I don't know why it just always has always been a plant that I struggle with. I have bought little individual plugs that I have rooted out and then added into a bigger pot, destroyed by mealybugs. Or another way that I've accidentally killed them, I think, is letting them dry out too long where their roots get rotted whenever I rehydrate the soil and I get root rot and then they have woody or mushy stems and then they just melt. They just disintegrate and it's actually really, really sad because obviously it's such a beautiful plant. I have had this plant three separate times trying to keep it alive and that is my kind of three strike rule and then you are out of the collection. I will not be repurchasing you. So that is a big, big player on my list today that I would just never repurchase or try again unless maybe, maybe I got a huge, long, like mature one that I know didn't have any pests or any issues going on with it. And all I really needed to do was focus on a good watering schedule and take over from a previous owner. That is the only other scenario I would take a Hoya Cardosa Compacta variegated ever because I just think they don't like me. So it is really, really sad that I cannot keep this beautiful plant alive, but nonetheless, I do obviously think that they are beautiful plants and whoever can take care of these plants, props and kudos to you because I am super jealous that you can have such a beautiful luscious plant and be able to have it thrive for you. It just does not thrive for me. And this also goes for the green version. And I guess I would probably assume any other versions of the compactas because I just don't do well with that one either. And I do well with my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess and my queen. They do just fine. So I guess the compactas just don't like me. So that is a big lesson learned and I am no longer going to be repurchasing that plant. So that was our very first plant for the day, the Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. The next plant on my list that I would never repurchase again are golden pothos or really any pothos of any kind unless they were a different variety than I already have like my mandula pothos I love, my global green pothos, but I would never repurchase a golden pothos or even really a just normal jade green pothos ever again just because I already have so many of them. As you guys know, Pothos in general are really prolific growers and they really take off when they are put in the best conditions with light and watering and if you get a good schedule going on them, they will 
put out a lot of growth for you, especially during spring and summer. Here in Florida, they go even longer with our growing season because we just don't get as cold here. But the biggest reason I would not obviously want to repurchase another Golden Pothos is to just simply save money. I have so many Golden Pothos now just from chopping and propping and making more individual Golden Pothos or Jade Pothos plants. So that is my biggest tip for new beginner plant parents in general. If you don't have a big budget to spend on plants, you can always chop and prop and make a more jungle effect, especially with pothos and philodendrons that trail. You can really achieve that jungle vibes, jungle boho look of a home that has a lot of plants and foliage without having to spend a lot. It does take a lot of work, obviously, and time before you have multiple baskets of multiple cuttings and all stemming from one big mama plant because obviously when you do cut that mama plant you have to give it time to regenerate those cuttings that you are taking take time to root and then make their own trailingness so it all requires a lot of patience so don't beat yourself up if you do not have hundreds and hundreds of baskets of pothos a lot of people don't even like pothos so i understand that they think it's basic or whatever i personally think pothos really provide a really cute jungly vibe to the home especially when put on a curtain rod or anything like that so yeah i do love golden pothos obviously but i just would not be repurchasing it anytime soon or really ever again probably because i just have so many of them them and I have been propagating and propagating and propagating so now I'm able to basically have my own inventory of golden pothos, jade pothos, and I guess including marble queen pothos. I have three really big mother plants of all of them and I just take cuttings from those and make even more so it really is sort of a self-fulfilling cycle and really easy to get that again jungle look if you just take the time to keep propping and chopping but yeah that is the biggest reason the golden pothos jade marble queen even my manjulas and everything manjula I would maybe repurchase just because I noticed it is a bit of a slower grower but other than that, all of the more common pothos I would not repurchase simply because I have so many of them and chopping and propping is the way to go with pothos. So yeah, that was our second plant for the day. The golden pothos, jade pothos, and marble queen, all the more common types of pothos. So let's go ahead and move on to the next plant. So for the very next plant, I do have an OG plant that I had actually purchased way in the beginning, possibly even the first couple of plants I ever really got when getting into plants. So I do hold a little bit of a special place in my heart for this specific plant, but I simply would not repurchase it just because Again, in the beginning, I was very new to plants and I bought so many of this specific type of plant that I sort of burnt myself out and now I just sort of want them to die because I'm done taking care of them. They're sort of boring and the plant I am referring to are African violets. So I really did go ham on buying a lot of African violets in the beginning. I believe I had nine African violets at one point, all obviously different colors and the blooms are obviously very beautiful and the flowers are so cute but when you have nine of them on like a windowsill all basically taking up space that you could have other really unique looking plants in their spots it really got old pretty fast and I ended up honestly sort of just neglecting them and they sort of just started unaliving themselves one by one until I only have I believe like three or four at the most left and I just would not want to repurchase another African violet ever again just because I think they are just a little outdone for me. I don't think they really bring me any joy and I think the number one rule to keeping plants, especially when you have such a large number of plants like me and a lot of other plant parents do, you only want to introduce plants into your collection that cause you joy and bring you joy and make you want to stare at them for hours and just be so enamored with how beautiful they are. So that is what keeping and taking care of plants makes it worth it to me. So with plants that don't bring me joy like the African violets. I sort of neglect them. So yeah, that was the reasoning behind why I would never want to repurchase or add an African violet to my plant collection ever again. They're just too boring for me. So that was our third plant on the list today, the African violet. 
next plant on my list today are aglionemas and I don't know about you guys but I have never had good luck with any type of aglionema I've ever gotten. If you did watch my recent plant tour video you'll know that I have one aglionema in my collection and it is outside sort of fending for itself and I really don't pay any attention to that plant at all. It gets water when it rains and it just sort of chills out there. I do bring it inside because I feel bad for it when it does freeze because I don't want to see any plant just turn to black mush if I can prevent it. But I again it's just one of those plants that don't cause me very much joy at all to look at or take care of so she sort of just hangs out outside and fends for herself and I actually did have another type of aglionema it was a very very pink aglionema it was like very pink and watermelon like looking and it was just a random plant that I got at like an ace hardware or like a home depot I think like on the way home from the international air Raid show I was like oh I'm not done buying plants I was like such a plant hoarder in the first year of getting into plants I had no impulse control of buying plants. I still sort of don't, but I'm a lot more disciplined now. And again, I'm a lot more picky of the plants that I bring into my collection. And this plant never did well for me either. Aglionemas just don't do well inside for me. They thrive outside, I guess. But especially at a smaller like size, I got that pink one at. It just did not do well at all. Quickly died. I mean, I think it was like a one leaf plant for months. And then eventually it just croaked out on me the last time I forgot to water it so so yeah that is the biggest reason I would not be repurchasing any type of aglionema no matter the beautiful foliage or type or variety or whatever you want to call it I would just not ever want to repurchase a aglionema of any kind ever again I know they are not the plant for me and I know they do not like me so that was our I believe fourth plant for the day and any aglionema ever I would never want to repurchase so let's go ahead and get into the next plant Alrighty, so for the next plant on my list, it may come as a shocker to you guys because I have this plant tattooed on my literal body, but I am including the Monstera Deliciosa on our list today solely because they get so, so massive. I do have one inside my plant room currently, but it is just such a massive plant that I feel like it is taking away from a more of a calm sitting area that I could achieve in that plant room and I do plan on renovating the plant room and sort of switching things around and let me know if that's something you'd want me to film and upload as a video. I am definitely thinking about moving my giant monstera that is in the plant room and moving it outside where the other giant monstera cutting that I took from that plant uh, like over a year ago I rooted it out in a big bucket and I brought it from house to house and then I planted it on our oak tree which is so beautiful and massive and now hopefully this summer it will start to climb this oak tree and I'm hoping I can add these two other big main stems of monstera that I have in the house now and have them join the other monstera and just have three beautiful main stems of monstera going up that tree and hopefully I'll try and cover them during the winter as like I did this past winter and it seemed fine and hopefully that'll continue throughout the years and we can have a massive monstera on our tree. So yeah that is the only real reason I do not ever see myself repurchasing a monstera deliciosa. They just simply get too huge and even living in a big size house I feel like they really need a statement piece room or like a sunroom to really be happy and have that like wow shocking statement plant moment and I just can't give it that inside right now so I think it'll do a lot better outside and that it is a more beautiful plant as a landscaping plant so I'm really excited to again add that to my tree out there so yeah that is the biggest reason I had to include that Monsero Deliciosa today it just simply gets way too big and I can't wait for mine to go outside and sort of have all of the Deliciosa Monsteras in my collection that aren't aren't that massive. Deliciosa is the large form variety than Borsigiana, which all of my other Monsteras are, like my Albo and my Aurea. They're both Borsigiana, so they're a smaller form and they're never going to get as big and thick as the Deliciosa. So I'm just going to move my Deliciosa outside, like I said, and hope that they do well and have a lot more room freed up in my plant room where I can maybe start to add a sitting area or maybe some more shelving and decorating going on in that room. So 
just feels a little bit more styled and homey rather than just a strict plant room. So uh, let me know again if that is something you want to see on this channel. I'll definitely film it for you guys. But that was our I think fifth plant for the day, the Monstera Deliciosa. So let's go ahead and get on to the next plant. We are getting to the end of this list, but not quite done just yet. The next plant I wanted to mention today was the plain good old staple money tree. So if you are a avid plant lover, you probably have either had this plant in your collection at some point or you still have it and it is a huge freaking plant now in a tree. A lot of people give this plant to loved ones for good luck and it is considered good luck to receive one. And yeah, that is simply what has happened to me. I think I am never going to have to repurchase or really ever purchase in the first place a money tree because they have all been gifted to me. I have four total money trees I do sort of take into account that one of the trees I unbraided the braids and made them individual little trees one of those died so I have two of those and then I do have my variegated beautiful variegated money tree I absolutely am in love with that plant and it obviously is a little bit different but still considered the same plant and then I also have a like chunk styled money tree as a centerpiece on my dining table and that is four money trees in my collection and probably too too many because I obviously love the original money tree as well as my variegated money tree so I know I would love to have them both in my collection I just don't know if I needed four in my collection so that is simply the only reason I would never repurchase the good old money tree and that is because I just have too many of them so yeah I definitely had to mention that on today's list the money tree is just going a little overboard in my collection so that is the sixth plant I believe for the day the money tree Alrighty, so I have about two plants left on the list today, so I did want to go ahead and mention the next plant on our list was the Boston Fern. And I know a lot of people have great luck with Boston Ferns or are on the other side of the spectrum like me and don't do well with them at all. So I really only took this as a one and done kind of death of a plant. And it was again one of the very first plants that I tried out and kind of fell victim to from Plantarina's beautiful collection of Boston Ferns and like Tiger Ferns and she had beautiful, beautiful, long, luscious ones. And I was like, I need that in my life. I had a sort of screened in patio at the time and I wanted to have it right up in the corner, hanging all beautiful. Really wanted them in all of the corners hanging up, but they were a lot of money at the time, at least for big old, like good, a good sized bushy one. And I got that thing home and I killed it within the week. I don't know what I did wrong. I am assuming maybe the soil was too dense and I drowned it, but they love water. So I don't, I still don't know what I did. I don't care to know what I did because I swore that day I would never mess with any sort of type of fern really in general, let alone Boston ferns ever again. I will never repurchase one ever again. And that was about two and a half years ago. So I definitely kept my promise and I will never be purchasing a Boston fern ever again because they are just so beautiful and amazing and lush when you buy them at the store or wherever you're getting it from. And then two days later, they just take a turn for the worst if you let them dry out at all they'll just crisp up and die so I am learning that you either are really great at taking care of ferns or you are really bad at taking care of ferns and that is me so I will never be repurchasing any sort of fern besides my asparagus fern you guys know I have a kind of good luck taking care of those but any other type of fern is a no-go for me so that is definitely why I had to mention it on today's list and that is our second to last plant for the day the Boston fern all right, for the last plant on our list today, it was actually sort of recommended by Austin and he sort of threw it out at me while he was visiting on break here earlier. And he was like, what about your Calathea obrifolia? And I was like, that's a great one. Any sort of Calathea really in general, I will sort of always steer clear from and I will never be repurchasing the Calathea obrifolia in particular. So I purchased two Calathea oberfolias. One was my dad's and one was mine. And I was actually really jealous that my dad's was way bigger than the one I had got 
couple of weeks before and then he saw mine and he wanted one and we went out shopping for one and he ended up getting a big beautiful one and then he ended up giving me that one because he knew I loved how big it was and I ended up killing them both so really really sad ending there they just had a really slow death I still have the bigger one it just is like two leaves and I'm waiting on like the little shoots to come back up but I don't know if it's gonna happen. It lives outside now, it's fending for itself. Prayers to that Calathea Oberfolia and really any other Calathea that will never be in my collection because I refuse to purchase one ever again. I think just like Aglionemas and what was the other one that I do not do well with? Ferns. So yeah, I don't do well with Calatheas, Ferns, or Aglionemas and I will never be repurchasing any sort of Calathea again for the sole reason of this Oberfolia doing absolute trash with me and I just can't get myself to ever go through that again and watch the plant slowly die and disintegrate over time turn from such a big beautiful luscious plant into these two little stalks of leaves so really really sad definitely had to give it a mention today and they are beautiful plants I would love to have it in my collection if I could take care of it and have it looking the way it's supposed to look but it simply is just not in the cards for me it doesn't like me and I don't like it yeah the feeling is mutual so that was the biggest reason I had to definitely include the Calathea orbifolia on this list today and shout out to Austin for throwing that suggestion out there because it is definitely one of the plants I have struggled with in the past and lately until it slowly is just going to be dead and out of the collection so yeah that does bring us to the end of today's video and I so so appreciate you if you stuck all the way to the end and I so do hope you enjoyed getting to see all of the plants that I would never repurchase again under any circumstances. So if you did enjoy and stick all the way to the end, I do appreciate you and please ask that you leave a like, a comment down below, or even hitting that subscribe bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new video and to help me keep on planting. Please also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at planted.hippie where I post new planty photos and occasionally reels daily. So with that, I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.